Okay, that's going. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to a follow-up on Turning of the Seasons called Here's to Another Lonely Millennium. I'm Crack, and I'll be playing Igni. And with me today is... Hello, everybody. My name is Wiss, and uh, I'm going to be playing the Keeper of the Tower of the Sky. <laughs> We're back in this sort of zone again. Yep. Uh, time for just a little chat. So, on that note, uh, the way I'm timing this, if I remember correctly, is like, you know, it's been a little bit maybe since, you know, the gang saved the world. For reals this time. <laughs> for reals. Yep. Save the seasons. There was a, you know, bad dragon instead of a good dragon turned bonkers mm -hmm. that's all good keep right a bit of a time yeah yeehaw everyone went on their separate ways absolutely but <laughs> spring is still going and igni's actually ended up deciding to circle back around and has been making her way back to that tower tower mm. of the sky and today she has arrived Cool. Which means I just realized, does she have to do the whole rigmarole of jumping the gap? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Things I didn't think about. Quite frankly, she forgot about it until she's there and suddenly realizes, ah. <laughs> oh yes, the river. Hmm. The river, river. Not river, river. Mm-hmm. Well, time to make a jump. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see if that's enough. Uh, I need to be in the roll zone for this. Because mm -hmm. that is... Only an 11. Only an 11. Okay. Um, so, like, you reckon that with the jump that you've made, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that because there's, there's still a knocked down tree which you could jump from. Would, would Igni have remembered the tree? I would hope so because the tree is still physically present. Like, she can see it with her eyeball. Yeah. Um, okay, so... If you like, we can do a perception. <laughs> see if she's ended up using that or not. Up to you. <laughs> We're off to such a good start today, Wiz, because that's a seven on the dice. Oh my god. Are you kidding, honey? Seven plus five, though, which... Twelve. Um, I'm gonna say that she's only noticed it as she's making the jump. Okay. <laughs> she's already made hair. She's like, ah, crud. Um, yeah, right. So, um, you make your jump and it's, it's just not enough. You know that there's some sort of, uh, sweet spot mid, midway through the river, but with an 11, you're not, you're not making it. So you go into the drink, uh, unfortunately. Terrible. Well, that is one like wet cad of a creature. <laughs> It's climbing up onto the platform. Oh dear. <laughs> um, and maybe a score has come to come and help me out of the water. Oh dear. Oh um, man. Oh man. Um, but yeah, after doggy paddling uh, undignifiedly the rest of the way, which is very funny because I think Wimsy had to do the same thing. <laughs> um. You, you're on that platform at the bottom of the Tower of the Sky. And just like when you were here in early spring after saving everything, it, it looks exactly the same as it was. Um, the, the dome on top is glowing a, a light green and the stone is thankfully white and nice and peaceful, etc. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. Well... She's gonna shake herself off like a wet dog and begin the climb. All right, roll me a con. <laughs> uh, 
The dice are so good to me today. <laughs> Have another 12. Okay, 12 is all right. Um, We're all middle sliders at the moment. <laughs> That's okay. Like, with the 12, yeah, like, you might be a little out of breath by the time you get to the very top of the tower. And, like, it's a tall tower, so it's fairly reasonable to expect to be out of out of breath. And also, you were just in the water. Ew. Yeah. Awful. Don't like that. <laughs> Awful. I mean, this has gone better, frankly, than some other times. And the other times she had, you know, Briar <laughs> to carry her around. Yeah, so, yeah, you're a little bit out of breath. You might want to just take a moment. But um, you do get to the top without having to, to rest for too long. And the the area looks pretty much as it did the first time that you were here. The There is that, that cloud, that mist, that fog that's around on the, the top landing. And the door with the quatrefoil on it is, is closed. Hmm. Well gonna step inside and call out hello keeper of the tower of the sky <laughs> i'm just gonna roll something back here now da, 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 da. Um. okay that is a 15 no you did not frighten him at all <laughs> um definitely not definitely not um, as you're looking around the airy, um, it's very wide up here. You're kind of used to that by now. Um, but the keeper is moving uh, uh, towards you, towards the door, um, out of this mist. And he, he actually looks a little surprised to see you, but no, not not shocked or anything. Um, and he he he's smiling and just goes, I oh, wasn't expecting you to come back. Well, it simply seems that if I understand how this all works correctly, there isn't much time or opportunity to come back. So best take it while it's here, yes? I suppose that is true. I, well, spring has well and truly sprung. I may have a day or a couple of hours. It has been a few weeks. Ah, that close. Mm. Ickney's gonna roll an insight. Mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. Good job, girl. I can type the right things. <laughs> Dirty twenty. Dirty <Beautiful>. twenty. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Yeah. No. Um. He's smiling. He's definitely smiling. Definitely pleased to see Igni. But there is this sort of sadness, this tension in his shoulders that just doesn't re read like anxious so much. But he's just sad a bit, and maybe a bit depressed. I suppose. But he's still smiling. He, he's just none of that is showing on his face. It's just sort of the way that he's holding himself more than anything else. Come sit with me, keeper of the tower of the sky. Uh, Igni's gonna go and, you know, find a good view. Quite frankly, the entire place has a good view. Mm. But find an edge. Sit down. Okay. Um, well, he, he there's probably the best place. You, you'd have to pick a piece of, um, of balustrade to sit on more than anything else. Um, but there is a little bit of a lip, actually, on the other side of the handrail, so you could climb over it and sit there. Um, oh, we can be daring, huh? <laughs> um, and your options are face some mountains or face upriver or face downriver, really. Hmm. You know, face mountains. Mountains? Okay. Um, and the keeper will come and, like, he'll follow after 
Igni and he kind of ducks under the handrail rather than clambering over it to sit next to you. And he gives a little bit of a chuckle and goes, if it's easier, you can just call me Sky. All right, Sky. So what hmm. do I owe the pleasure? Just, it occurred to me that you might like company. Okay, he can't even hide that. I'm not going to roll him a deception. He looks genuinely surprised. <laughs> uh, well, I can't say it's something I've got particularly much experience in. Yes, mostly because of that. How this is interesting for me because I, to be honest, I don't actually like this question being asked of me, but I do feel it is perhaps relevant. Sky, how old are you in any or all senses? He puts a hand to his chin and kind of has a think about it. Hmm. Strictly speaking, I am millennia old. I'm not quite sure how many. Quite a few. Mm. Thousands and thousands of years. But I've not spent all of those thousands of years able to enjoy it. So I don't feel as though I'm really have that much as much life experience as that age would, would suggest hmm. if I am understanding things right you enter a sort of stasis soon yes when spring is over my year in this world will end. And I will return to a mm, semi-conscious state, I suppose. Simply watching and waiting until the next time I come to serve my purpose. Are you ready? Ready or not, I don't have a choice. It's not something that I do, it happens to me. Right. When spring is over, and summer takes over again, then myself and the tower Fade away. As if we were never here. Hmm. Igni's head is just tilting curiously because, you know, she's going to voice this thought. <laughs> and what happens if I'm in the tower when that happens? There's this sort of dot 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 kind of expression and then he frowns and then he he sort of looks a bit more thoughtful and then frowns some more and then <laughs> I genuinely do not know there are any number of things that could happen and I don't know that any of them would be necessarily be good for you it might dissolve around you and then you plummet into the river below I think the island comes with us. I'm not sure. The river would be better than the ground if the island does stay, but that's one option. It just disappears, leaving you hovering in the sky. Um, but no one's ever been here. So I genuinely don't know. 
and there's never there was never a need for anyone to be here before correct there was mm, not a crisis as was this year <laughs> this year was definitely a crisis but i don't think i've before all of you really had mortals in this tower i've had the company of the familiars and the gods occasionally but not usually often i know people have seen my tower i know there are stories of it but no one's really ventured inside hmm. that seems rather a shame the stairs might put people off. Well, that just makes them cowards. <laughs> I'm not sure how much control I have over the appearance of the tower, but for next time I manifest here, I'm going to at least try and make it a little easier to navigate. Huh. What? Does that make... The place physically shorter or simply manipulating the space inside either could be a possibility but i feel like being further away from the sky generally defeats the purpose hmm. but i've been explicitly told to put in a lift so either that or yeah, bending the rules of, t of space may be beyond me, but I can definitely try. Oh, and a bridge. Who? I've been asked to put in a bridge. And who made those requests? Mm, one of your companions. You're not the first to come and visit me after everything. That's good, I think. Perhaps. I'm not sure if he got what he came for. I take it it was Wimdy then? It was. Was that a good conversation? It was... It was neither good nor bad, I don't think. He asked questions of me, and I asked questions of him which made him uncomfortable. Seems like most questions do, which is unfortunate for him. Mine were very pointed. Huh. But the answers that I got to my questions weren't for my sake. Sometimes having a question voiced makes it easier to answer for yourself. And I don't think he appreciated that at all. Rest assured, I'm not hear so much to ask questions. Well, you would be welcome to do so. I have no reason to keep any secrets. Hmm. Igni just appears to be thinking. <laughs> at the moment big thought hmm. i think sky is um he's quiet for as long as igni is but there's just this sort of awkward sort of vibe about him like <laughs> he's like uh, okay uh do i say something the fuck do I do? <laughs> Two introverts sitting in a tower. Uh-huh. Yep. Q 
you go to sleep for lack of a phrase so far, but the familiars do not. That's correct. Their roles and mine are very separate. And should their patrons need them, I'm afraid the whims of the gods would outweigh any requests that you might have of a squaw. But their role is ongoing and eternal. Mine is as well, but only needed sporadically. Hmm. The role I play in between when this truce is strong and steady for a thousand years is, I wouldn't say minor. All I do is watch and vaguely remember. Forgive my saying so, it seems a task appointed a little cruelly. Hmm. Perhaps. Perhaps they didn't mean to make me be as aware as I am. But this is the only life I've ever had and ever known. They did not take me in from, from an existence and then give me this job. It was made for and as part of me. And I've done it without fail, without interference up until now. <laughs> but it is lonely, yes. Before the Would you like you, me to stay? <laughs> you don't have to, if you have other business. I very rarely have other business, Sky. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind the company. I, as I said, I'm not experienced in it. I don't know how good of a company I might be. Oh. Trust me, the person has to work hard to be poor company. Hmm. Well, that is encouraging. I'm... I... Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm simply thinking about how I don't like being how I stole the way I am because I... Really don't know. There isn't an answer that's satisfactory for people, and that's short. Hmm. I don't know if I would exist in any form in another millennia. Hmm. My point though, is if I were in all likelihood, almost certainly, I wouldn't remember you or how myself and Briar and River and Wimdy save the seasons. But I like to think there are some consistencies to me. If, if I were to be around, you, you could call me to your tower. 
I appreciate friends, even if I don't remember them. I pick up fairly quickly, I like to think. Well, if you continue to live for that long, you would be more than welcome. And, thankfully, being a, an immortal familiar of a god, a school, I would not leave your side either. Perhaps <laughs> it, it would help jog the memory somewhat. That would actually be helpful in that respect, yes. I'm not used to having a constant companion like this. It's interesting. Or carrying reminders. Usually I just let things like that take its course. There is some merit in letting things drift away on the wind. Some things are too hard to hold between your hands. As soft as clouds just simply drifting by. They cannot be contained. They will just do as they will. That's a good metaphor for it. I've always thought of it as like trying to hold sand in your palms forever. sand that can be held it may be difficult to keep hold of while one wants to do other things but have you ever tried holding on to a cloud <laughs> oh not in my memory <laughs> they look like they should have substance and only for certain instances do they. For gags and etc. Well, if you still live the next time I manifest here, I would welcome your company. And the same would apply would... to any of your party, though. I <laughs> suspect it may be limited to simply you and Wimdy. The other two, I don't think, have the life expectancy to stretch that far. But Wimdy does? Mm. Toons. <laughs> it is a mystery. Even to someone like me. Age does get strange with us. And then there's also the complications to factor in such as uh, a potential erasure events. Although even those are not as cataclysmic as are necessarily advertised, I think. There are ways to avoid being caught in them. My method is simply not being here when they happen. Oh, that's been my method too, at least once. Hmm. Outside of Ankwell, in any capacity, will do the job. <sighs> I don't want to think about what would happen should one occur while I am here how much I would be affected, if any. Don't think I care to entertain the notion, quite frankly. Hmm. No divine preventions in place? I am not certain of all of the contingencies. I wasn't particularly involved in my own creation. <laughs> to put it one way, I simply wasn't and then simply was and it was the last time i saw all four of them together hmm. 
certain they were but children then. Huh. I suppose he did say millennia upon millennia. Mm. They made me to help them keep their boundaries. They were and partially still are a pack of children who cannot get along, always squabbling over territory. That toy is mine. No, that book is mine. That sort of thing. I, I remember seeing it to other races, other people. And the gods are no different. They just have a lot more power. And their squabbles cause problems for everyone else. They are adults now, theoretically, but some squabbles they just haven't been able to put behind them, which is why I exist still to this day. An sure. appointed intermediary. Yes. Made with all four of their magics. So that I am impartial. Equally shared, so no particular claim can be made. That's right. But because no particular claim can be made, many of them don't come and interact with me for fear of the others thinking that I'm putting them offside. If I can't be impartial, then no one can. I do wish they would just talk to one another now, but... I also fear that, in a bit of a selfish way, I suppose, if they were to talk and just act like the adults they claim they are, they would no longer have a need for me. And I would disappear entirely. My purpose would not exist. But it's all, all conjecture, really. <laughs> it's interesting to be viewing divinities as really rather human. Hmm. I suppose it must seem that way. But from what I've seen, the things I've watched, the bits and pieces that I remember, there are families of every race, just the same as them. They simply have a different playing field. And, as I said, their squabbles have consequences. Larger than any mortal's consequences could ever be forces of nature themselves can be affected when they have their temper tantrums. I, I think it's a measure of responsibility. Mm. And I suppose having that much power behind oneself would change your way of thinking. Every action must be considered very carefully. You lose your you reason, you lose your capacity to control your power, and then others will have to rise against you in sometimes very, very strict ways. I don't know, it's a life that I would envy. <laughs> yes, it does sound rather grandiose and complex. I 
drifter, largely. Very little responsibility in, inherent to that. Sounds quite lovely, actually. Hmm. I have seen every place on Zatori that's visible from the sky. But the angle that I see it in the distance that I see it is so different. The only place I've seen with my own eyes is this valley and this river. Do you need to remain here? I cannot leave. I've tried. But I cannot get farther than the platform on the ground floor. The teleportation circle doesn't work for me. And my body loses its substance if I try and step off into the water. That's as far hmm. out as I can get. Well, there's a few things I can bring to you then. Uh, Igni's actually going to reach into her hammer space. Okay. Where's the D10? There it is. Okay, uh, it takes a bit of rummaging, the two, but Igni's actually going to pull out a bottle of something, offer it out to uh, Sky. <laughs> He'll he'll accept it and look at it confusedly. Uh, if you'd like to roll investigation on it, you could. Sure, why not? Ah. Okay, I could completely miss the top part of my tower. Uh, uh. Roll, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, investigation plus three, so it's an 18. Nice. Uh, so fairly tall bottle. Mm -hmm. And the glass is a little bit opaque and there is a label on it, a bit worn, but with some examination, especially with the 18, can definitely read out the word juice. Okay. The See a something juice. Okay. Misc juice. From... <laughs> Miscellaneous juice. Uh, you know, I think the other friend information would be like small letters at the bottom, just where it's from, which is from. It's just put as dust. Okay. Which also, if the fact that Sky can't see everything in ankle from above. That's actually not a place I would recognize. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's half full. Okay. Well, he'll, he'll turn the bottle over and he'll look at it from every angle and then look back at Igni um, It seems as though you've enjoyed some of this already a little bit yes it was also already uh this one was open when i acquired it but you can try it do you want to roll an insight sure <laughs> <laughs> oh my fu really um I didn't say that one. Oh no. No, no. I'm gonna I can't give you advantages. Fuck that. Good. Roll it again. <laughs> there, that's far better. Have 17 instead. Okay, we can work with a 17. Oh god. Yep. Alright, sure. Um, so 
Sky continues to look at this bottle and he turns it over in his hand another couple of times and there's this this look on his face where Igni, you're not sure that he knows how or if he can. He's very confused. (laughs) (laughs) No. Like he's just sort of looking at it going, okay, what does it do? But he doesn't want to say anything, so he's just sitting there staring at it really awkwardly. Oh no. Another dig in Hammer's face for a moment's gonna pull out like a little cup. Mm hmm. Frankly, uh, a little shot glass. I yep. have picked it up in Lost Wages. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got the, the brand of a casino on the side. You know what? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that is never not gonna be. There's a little crack in it, so uh <laughs> there's been some adventures here it seems. <laughs> you know, because it's from Lost Wages, I'm gonna say it's like the kind of glass where like you tilt it different ways and it like reflects slightly different colors. Nice. Yes. Iridescent, flashy, you know. Typical Lost Wages bling. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> Gonna motion for the bottle back. He'll hand it back over. Gonna pour a little bit and it's like... It didn't actually occur to me to ask if you can consume food? Hmm. Um, somewhat ashamed to admit I've never tried. Well, now seems like the time. And Igni is just gonna take a swig from the bottle straight while handing over and... Hey. Just basically be the demonstration. Take a sippy. Okay, well he'll take the glass back and he's holding this little shot glass in both hands and he's like just sort of looking at it and I think as a an automatic reaction he's going to see that crack and he's just going to tap it with a fingertip and cast mending on it. <laughs> um, it's now mended. Hooray. It is now mended. It no longer has a crack. Um, but he's going to watch Igni drink from the bottle and then he'll he'll take a very small sip and like I'm not gonna make you roll inside or anything again. You can see that he's sort of just holding it in his mouth, waiting to see if anything will happen beyond that. Um, well make a constitution save. Yup. I was just about to <laughs> Oh no Sky <laughs> My God What's your con save? Okay, at least your con save's pretty alright. Oh, it's an 11. Oh, that does not beat the DC roll gave me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Igni with your 24, just like, this is water to her, basically, from just the looks of it, whatever. Takes mm-hmm. a sip. Uh, Sky, what the hell? Um, Hot. Hot, 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 <laughs> hot. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> How are you gonna react? So you're holding this in your mouth? Uh, have fun with that. <laughs> well, he doesn't know how to swallow. <laughs> He's never had food before. <laughs> Okay. Oh dear. Um. All right. How am I gonna do this? Um. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. I'm going to roll him another con, and if it's low, he he spits it out. If it's high, he will swallow it on reflex. <laughs> okay. And it will not stay in the thing. Stay in the thing. Uh, yeah, thank you. I don't need to start that. Okay, that's a 16. I think he's going to kind of splutter a little bit and he'll swallow it on reflex. 
and then just sort of put a hand to his mouth and curl in on himself a little bit and then <laughs> cough. <coughs> that is a sensation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reach over and pat Sky's shoulder. I <clears throat> can see why you might like that beverage. <clears throat> you I... just hand the glass back. <laughs> I do keep on forgetting that uh, my <laughs> tolerance for such things is a little high. Uh, cactus juice. It is the quenchiest, but... <clears throat> It does come from outside Anquil. Hmm. It's actually a product of where I come from. I see. Well, it must be a fascinating place. (laughs) Some certainly think so. Others might say it is quite boring and why might that be stretches of endless desert don't seem to inspire uh, fascination in most people exceptions of course I have run into an archaeologist who is actually doing some quite in-depth research into settlements within those endless stretches Hmm. I think I would find them quite fascinating, too. I have seen the worn desert from afar, but never been there, never been close enough to touch the sand. I'm sure hammer space be, again. I'm sure it would be fascinating for a while at least. Igni's reaching into hammer space again, and normally uh, she either avoids this sort of thing as much as she can or like has to shake sand off of things, but this time, <laughs> no, no, no. We're getting sand out of the hammer space. We're purposely reaching for it rather than it being simply always there, mm-hmm. like glitter. <laughs> it's going to be a few moments of just like pulling out enough to make a decent handful. Mm -hmm. Just, all right, hold out your hands. He will kind of give a surprised little blink, but then, then he will. And just going to let that fall into his, pour it in there. Sand from dust over in Faruma. And he'll, hold it and like the way that he's holding this small pile of sand is like as if he was holding a a newborn like some sort of tiny baby animal or something made out of glass he's holding it so delicately and and he's just sort of nudging it with his thumb and just moving it backwards and forwards (sighs) it's very soft and you just carry this around with you in your pockets. A little bit unintentionally, sand is of a property where it's small and granular, as you can feel. So it does have a tendency to uh, get everywhere. <laughs> and I did recently revisit, which means... You've replenished. My... <laughs> yes. And I did perhaps take... Some purposefully, just I did not know when I would be back. Do you miss it? I'm glad you think it's soft. Some people find it rather coarse and rough and dislike that it gets everywhere. Hmm. Well, sandstorms are not usually strong enough to blow sand here. (laughs) I've seen rain, snow, hail... Wind, leaves, and some dirt and dust, but 
There is so much more of this world and I just cannot reach it. But thank you. <laughs> I actually think it's quite pleasant. Good. And he'll go to offer the sand back to her. No, no, keep it. There, I have. Trust me, there is plenty where that came from. Half the time when I pull things, I'd have to shake it off. Hmm. Well, I will, um... I will try to keep a hold of it. I don't know what will happen when I leave, but... We'll see. It's here for now, and that's what matters. Mm -hmm. The present moment is... usually the least depressing of any moment. Often. Dwelling on the past or worrying about the future is... I understand, I suppose, why people can fixate on it, but... It usually... It's not in my nature to... That does take a certain measure of maturity. <laughs> I don't know if I would call it maturity. I suppose it is, but a mindset? It's again, not my nature doesn't occur to me to cling much to the past it just doesn't make sense mm. sometimes but... the past is all that we've got <laughs> and for everything that happened this year for all of the uncertainty and the worry that I felt and being physically attacked that was that was definitely new but that was more exciting than anything that's happened in my entire life I am going to be ruminating on this year as it turns into the ancient past for the rest of my life I'm glad that you'll remember it then. And even remember it fondly. Do you want to roll another insight? Yeah. Love to. Uh, da, da, da. This will be another dirty 20. Nice. Okay. So, um, as he was saying this, um, Sky had the the sand that you gave him clenched in one hand and he's sort of put that hand against his chest and is looking away a little bit but that sadness that igni could see earlier it's only intensified um he's sad and a little afraid and um i'm gonna roll him a deception I'm going to roll him a disadvantage because you're emotionally compromised. You can't get two 17s in a row. That's rude. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Well, it's only... Uh, nine. Okay. So, that's still less than a dirty 20. Um, <clears throat> but, like, he looks like he's actually struggling to keep his composure and doesn't know how to deal with it. Do you need a hug? He kind of blinks and straightens and looks back at her. I uh, don't know that I've ever had one, so I wouldn't know what it would do. Well, I suppose. 
suppose now would be the time to see if you even like those. And Igni's just gonna hold open arms. Okay. If you um, wish. Uh, he's still sad, but the confusion has kind of broken through that a little. Um, he doesn't know how to do this either, but he does sort of just shimmy over where he's sitting so that he's sitting right next to her. So he's well within arm's reach to be hugged. Anyone watching this would be like, this is the most awkward thing I've seen in my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Igni knows full well how hugs are supposed to go. Why is she so terrible at this? <laughs> she has, in fact, witnessed hugs. Has, in fact, been hugged occasionally, probably. But just... Sky scoot scoots, Igni scoot scoots. <laughs> and then... There was con uh, remind me, okay? I was going off the earlier uh, FPS art with Wimdy. How tall is Sky? Oh, he's quite tall. Like, um, I think he's like six foot tall. As far as tunes are concerned, he's quite tall. Okay, so congrats. Um, Sky has now joined the ranks of Igni and the Twinks because those <laughs> motherfuckers are all also around the six foot range. <laughs> Surprise, everybody! Igni and the Twinks included the Keeper of the Tower of the Sky this entire goddamn time. I mean, I kind of changed his design after you guys all showed me who you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was on purpose. <laughs> oh, <dear>. Incredible. <laughs> Point being, uh... Igni's like a foot smaller and I think they've still been sitting this whole time so it's gonna end up kind of he ends up having to lean down and she's kind of leaning up but there's hug is occurring okay. pat pat <laughs> um he's very stiff for the probably most of this hug while he's trying to sort of uh figure out if he's doing it right, because like he's not hugging her back or anything, because he doesn't know he's expected to. So he's just sort of leaning down, letting her hug him, and there's, there's this moment after where it's just about to start getting a little awkward with how stiff he is. There's just sort of this slump a little bit, and I'm just gonna roll him a whiz save real quick. At this, thank you. Why are you doing this? Why are you like this? <laughs> I mean, I know ex there we go. I know exactly why you like this because I made you that way, but that's not the point. And your whiz save is not as high as your others. So that's a nine. <laughs> oh. Um. So he does sort of slump a bit after having sort of processed this whole hug concept, and um, his shoulders start shaking a little. And he's holding his breath. And he's trying really, really hard not to cry. Uh, Igni has kind of moved to like, you know, rub a hand up and down the back. She's actually going to start humming. That's going to make it worse. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's just slowly getting louder. These little sobs. <laughs> yeah, Igni's just continuing to hum because if there's one thing that's universal across time and experience is music to her it's like it's uh a hug is is meant to enable processing and release so you can do what you need to 
Yes. Mm. Mm. Warm. Grief is natural as horrible it is as it is to feel in the moment. I don't want to disappear again. I know. I will stay here and you will not be alone and you still will and do exist. You watch, but this time we for know that you are watching so we can say hello. That is a comfort. Yes. <laughs> and he'll um he'll sort of sit up after a while and he he's got this expression on his face like he's never cried before either. <laughs> so like he's wiping at his face with his free hand because he's still got the other one gripping that little handful of sand. It's been thousands of years and I never much thought about everything I was missing but not until it came knocking on your doorstep yes Just a shame that I don't have a choice in this. I will do my job, I will do my duty, but I may want to have a word with your charges, yes. But in the meantime, if you cannot leave and the season, end of season is upon us, then we'll experience it together, yes? And the next time I'm here, if you still live, which I sorely hope you do, hopefully you remember well enough to tell me what it looked like. Actually, actually, I really hope I remember how this works correctly because Igni's once again going to hammer space. Okay, a, it's actually going to pull out a small uh, crystal orb. I really, really hope my memory is sufficient enough for ruined recollections for this. <laughs> but my my memory is full of holes and faulty, and sand passes through it over time. But this is a technology that records. And she's actually going to tap it, and there's a projection that comes out, and... <laughs> Sky, you don't know what the hell you're seeing because uh, yes, sure, that's the splash of color. That it, that's that's Igni there. It's got hands thrown above her head, and behind her is uh, bubbling, growing mass of. It takes a solid moment, but. Guy, you think it's frogs? A frog? Multiple frogs? Huh. 
<laughs> it's Igni with her arms thrown out in front of this thing, and the location might be a stage. And it's just a short, looping recording of just throb. Huh. Well, I recognize you. <laughs> These stones can record things for... Well, considering that this was still operational when we uncovered it, and others still show memories even now. I think this could last a millennium. So I may not remember, but this will. So we could record something now. If you like. He's got this odd kind of look on his face. It's like a little bit hopeful, a little bit disbelieving, a little bit, oh, but should I? Uh, kind of unsure kind of vibe about him. But he he takes a moment and then squares his shoulders a bit and then gives a nod. If you are happy to keep that recording for that whole time. I... I think I would like to. Yes. But uh, I think, just in case, the tower disappears around you, perhaps on the ground floor might be an idea. If you insist. If being away from your sky at this stage will not harm you. Hmm. Shouldn't do. All right. And even if it's going to stand up and go for it, there is now a mission. <laughs> and going down the stairs is a lot easier than coming up them. Oh, absolutely. And um, Sky comes behind you. He sort of does just drift down the stairs. Um, oh, cheater. Oh, yeah. Like, he seems like he's made out of clouds for the most part. Like, and it's even more obvious now that he's out of the airy because the airy is just covered in that mist. But as, as he comes away from it, it's not him necessarily. Like there is some of it that's him, but like, he doesn't seem to have like properly formed legs. Um, and he does actually seem partially see through as he gets down to the bottom floor. Um, and whether or not that's a, hmm, spring's almost over, or a, this is just what you look like when you're down here, a Igni's not sure. <laughs> and uh, Igni's just messing with this orb as moved down to make sure it's like, okay, so set up to record over Forb. As good as Forb is. <laughs> <laughs> She enjoyed Forb in the moment, and that's what matters. That's that's how she rolls. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Um, all right. But so you're gonna down. find somewhere to set it up so that it can, uh, so that they can both be in view potentially. Mm hmm. Um. All right. Well, I mean, there is the the this, the steps on the ground floor is probably the best place to put it. Um, so that they can both be like you, so you can walk in front of it, I suppose. Yeah. But um, yeah, Sky does sort of just he'll go out and he'll stand on that little platform, um, out the front door of the tower, and he he steps onto that that magic circle, and like you've used it several times now, um, and there's no glow; it almost dims when he steps on it, and. Like, the expression on his face isn't heartbroken, because it's always done that. But it's still disappointed yeah. in a way. You know, resigned. Yeah. But he will just sort of stand there and he'll look around from a slightly different angle and then look back at her. I don't know that we have a lot of time, actually. 
I can't feel it as such, but I can. If that makes sense. All right. And I suppose... Better hop to it, then. It's just going to hit the equivalent of record. <laughs> Hello, Sky. Uh, I suppose, what would you like it? What would you like me, or perhaps anyone who possesses this, to know about yourself? He's uh, sort of frowns a bit and is thoughtful and then just that I exist <laughs> I'm the keeper of the tower of the sky and in a thousand years I will be here again but thanks to you and your friends I haven't I haven't been alone this whole time. And I don't want to be alone again. That's all. Because we are friends now, and Igni's going to actually join frame, stand aside. So, in a thousand years, may you not be alone again, my friend. He's sort of smiling, but also trying desperately hard not to just break down into tears again. Partially because he didn't like how it felt, and pass partially because if I cry now, everyone's going to see it. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> So he's sort of just wiping his face with his free hand because he hasn't let go of that sand. Um, and then I'll get you to roll a perception. Oh boy. Okay, okay. Uh, perception mod is plus five. All right. That is the wrong channel. Uh, I need to be in the roll zone. Fifteen. All right, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, all right. So, I think you notice it looking at Sky before you notice it in the tower. There's, if you can imagine, like a fog, right? But then there's shoots of light that are breaking through the fog. It's kind of like, kind of like that, like streaks of light that are just dissipating streaks of of his form and then looking back up at the tower the same thing is happening there the whole tower of the sky is streaked through with these little transparent sections and the bits that you can still see are starting to become indistinct and white and not in a white stone kind of way in a cloud kind of way and starting at the top uh, it seems to be fading out and dissipating. Hmm. Going to take one of Sky's hands. It feels mostly sort of solid. Um... Like, it's not... Enough. <laughs> enough, yeah. Like, I mean, think of a, a really stiff jello. Not, not like in the wiggly kind of way, but in that you can kind of squish it kind of way. Like, it feels like it should kind of just go blurp off of your hand kind of uh, thing. Yeah, does it, ballistic does... gel. Yeah. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm painting a very bad word picture here, but it's like not a liquid and not a solid, but like... Sort of grabbable, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> grabbable works. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's just sort of standing there and like he's... So he's holding this little handful of sand in one hand and your hand with the other. And 
Um, as you've noticed these streaks of um, of light kind of just breaking up his form and breaking up the tower, there's this sort of look that's come over his face, like all of that sadness and all of those emotions he was just feeling have just kind of faded a bit. Like he's gotten, like they've gotten distant. And his eyes have kind of glazed over a little bit. But he's still holding on to your hand where you're grasping it. And he's still holding on to that sand in his other hand. But he seems to be like fading out a bit as well. I suppose, for now, this is it. He gives a few little blinks like he's trying to stay awake. And then kind of turns and looks at her. And all he manages is a little bit of a sad smile. And the hand that you're holding, it... It doesn't quite melt and it doesn't quite dissolve. It's like trying to hold a cloud in your hand. It's just wisps out of your grasp. And the rest of his body does as well into a fine white mist that fades on the now summer air. And that little handful of sand falls to the ground on this little island in the middle of the river as Sky and his tower disappear. And the orb kind of goes clatter, 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 clatter onto the ground too, from where it was. <laughs> yeah. It's like dropping the camera, so it's here, and then it's going <laughs> at the end of the recording. Does it stay on the island? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Igni would dive for it. <laughs> dive with a V. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, right. Yeah, no, it'll just clatter and um, fall onto the, um, there's grass there underneath, rather than stone. Yeah. As it is, she bows her head for a few moments and then goes to pick it up and quickly find what she assumes is kind of the front face of it. Mm-hmm. That was your friend, the Keeper of the Tower of the Sky. He is rather lonely and in a bit of an unfair situation. So, remember him. And come back if you can. And end that recording and make sure that it took and then stick it back in hammer space and just breathe for a moment. It's not going to pick up the sand off the island. She'll leave that there. It's his now. <laughs> exactly. And then sort of tilt her head up and look at the sky. I'll pass on farewells to the others and also let them know that uh, your designated time here has come to an end. Well, there's no response or any change in the summer sky above you. You get this feeling that he's heard you. And I think as a final thing, she's also going to call up uh, Askua. Well, the the little Askua. flamingo uh, will shoop out of out of your friendship bracelet and give a little stretch, and a little bit of a flutter of a little flame wings, and stand ready for instructions. 
Hello, friend. Mm. Hello. I would like you to give your uh, master a small message from me. Ooh, for Minardi? Sure. What's the message? I may be more, more verbose later, but we'll see how this goes. Please give them this expression. And it's just going to make a face, which I should note is extremely blank and just sort of motion. <laughs> they may get what that means. <laughs> it's very much the neutral face of disappointment meme. <laughs> Esco will tilt their head to one side and then nod and then be like, is this an urgent message or just the next time I see her? I think for maximum impact, it better be urgent. Okie dokie. I'll go do that now. I'll see you soon. And she gives a, a big flap of her little fire wings and just does a little shoop back into your bracelet. Oh, fucking heck, a blank face of disappointment. <laughs> oh, which will probably mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> just like a what the fuck? But Amy does not have the words for anything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid. I love it. I love it. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, <laughs> I, I guess Igni gets to tr figure out how to get across the river and go about her day. Yeah, this time she knows the tree is there. <laughs> I won't make you roll for it. Let's just let it let it happen. Oh my gosh. Yep. Well, that was that was fun. Thank you for doing this with me, Kraken. <laughs> Man, Sky. He is a sad lad. <laughs> And he didn't I'm just really like, man, realize you're it. really gonna make my character try to pick a fight with some gods? <laughs> <laughs> you gave her a direct line to them, almost. <laughs> to Summer. Well, I mean, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Turning the seasons, uh to electric boogaloo the four of them turn around and go hey what the fuck be <laughs> nice to this guy <laughs> <laughs> oh splendid i love it oh well, man well i suppose we should say goodbye to our audience shouldn't we <laughs> yeah bye, bye. <laughs>